Amen. OPVC Online, a ministry of Old Paz Baptist Church in Northfield, Minnesota. We are coming to you live here. It is 2.13 p.m. Central Time, and it is 7.24-2024. That's right, 7.24-2024. And a fly just went in my coffee, by the way. I'm going to drink it anyway. I'm just going to drink it anyway, because I'm not going to waste that whole cup of coffee. I'm just going to drink it. Because I guarantee you, in my life, I've ate a lot worse than that fly. I can guarantee you I have. On purpose. So anyway, for some reason, I have a bunch of flies in here. They will die. Yeah, Scrapple seems to be to be very similar to, like, Hash. Very similar to Spam. I don't know. what it seems like so anyway for some reason I have all these flies around me and now I have my coffee cup covered that fly that I think that I think that coffee's brutal cuz I think it killed that fly I think my wife's cold brew killed that fly man But it just ticked me off because it went right in my coffee, man. I pulled that fly out and I'd kill it twice if I could. Smash that thing to oblivion, man. Anyway. So. You know, we've been talking a lot about uh, Trump lately. I mean, the election coming up. And you knew I was going to. You knew I was going to get back to this, right? I mean, you knew I was, right? So I thought it was funny. This sermon or this broadcast, the first one I did, Trump 3.0. Actually, it was the second one I did. I just posted it first on Sermon Audio. Trump 3.0, the Trump Vance PSYOP continues. Literally shot up to my number one. Right? And it was the number one video on Sermon Audio. For 48 hours. Right? Number one. You knew I was coming back, right? To I was we were gonna get this done again. Now the second one has already charted up to like 300 uh and by the end of the day, it'll probably be at 400 or so. So all of it, because why? I really, because there's a lot of people that want to know just what in the world does Pastor Cooley think about all this? Because they know I deal with all things Trump when I get an opportunity, right? They know it. And they'll get a truthful analysis and not a man worshiping lick the boots of Trump analysis. But it's going to be a scriptural analysis of what's going on today. So, I did put it over on YouTube. And, of course, you know how YouTube loves to suppress everything. Right? They love it. I put it on last night. Here's how you know it's being suppressed, okay? Because it's Trump. It's on YouTube. I have 16,000 subscribers, so to speak. And I literally have 350 views. Take that same thing and go over to Sir, go over to Rumble and I have 1,000 and I only have like 200 subscribers. <laughs> Oh, that's funny, isn't it? So anyway, there you go. It is YouTube. And then I and then can you imagine? I actually have more 
downloads and views on Sermon Audio than I do on YouTube. Think about that for a second. YouTube's got like billions of people that watch it. That's how you know it's garbage. It's a big game that they play. That's how you know. Right. Nobody gets notified hardly. Watch me take. I feel like Bill Gates. Watch. I'm going to take a drink of this coffee. I feel like Bill Gates drinking that poopy water and telling everybody that it was good, right? Right? Watch. I feel like Bill Gates. Nah, it's still good. Feel like old Billy. Yeah, you don't have to watch it. It... Twice, obviously. You've already seen it, some of you. But anyway. So. I was reading my Bible this morning, and I, I actually last night I was like, huh, I wonder what I'm going to talk about. Well, I could do. Well, I could get back into Charles Chinnaquee's book. You know, I, I am going to get back to that eventually. I could. And then I was reading in Revelation in my normal Bible study, my devotion time in the morning. And I ran across two characters. Okay. I, I ran across two characters. And those two characters were very similar. To the two characters running, being selected for president today. And the picture, which, by the way, is talking about. They are seven literal churches at the time. Those seven literal churches in Revelation chapter two. Those types of churches are still here today. And so are these deceivers that have gone into the world. They are here today. So the Bible is warning us about these category of deceivers that would come. And I thought about the present deception that is covering, and I mean... Pretty good men out there that will say some things about Trump and then they'll be like, you know, they'll be like, well, but I'm still going to vote for him. Really? Trump's compromise has caused more damage to the Republican Party and to this nation than Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Bill Clinton could ever have done. They could not dream of being able to be as successful and cause the damage that Trump has caused. They couldn't even dream of it. Not even dream of it. To cause the amount of damage that Trump has caused in eight years. It's it's unbelievable.
and it will never be, listen to me when I say this, on this side of eternity. On this side of eternity, it will never be undone. Never. It'll never be undone on this side. Because compromise is worse than open enemies. Compromise does more to destroy than open enemies do. See, you're vigilant against open enemies. You're very vigilant against open enemies. Compromise, you're not. Compromise is very seducing. It's compromise is very seducing. It's a seducing spirit. And a lot of people can't see it. They differentiate their walk with God with their voting and backing. I actually saw a Christian, a Baptist, a Baptist man, a historic Baptist man who bragged about how great the Republican National Convention was. Right, Brother Ross? Correct. He bragged about how good the nat and I'm like, that was full of a bunch of false religion, compromise, destroying of, of marriage between a man and a woman, perverts, sodomites, homos. And you're telling me it was good? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's this mesmerizing, seducing spirit. I mean, if the platform was remotely close to liberty, to righteousness, that'd be one thing. But it's not even close. These are no James Madisons. These are no Washington or Jeffersons who had their flaws. Believe me, I understand. I know it. But the platform is not even close. It is a God-hating platform.
They pretend to get to give God lip service. But in works, they deny him being abominable and that every good work reprobate. And we're seeing it. It's very evident. Very evident. I want you to turn to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. And we are going to look at some scripture here. Verse 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there that hold there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. See, Balaam taught Balak how to get Israel. Then verse 20, another church, Thyatira. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Here we have the same thing, to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Spiritual seducers. Is what they are. Today, many churches are in open support of either Trump or Kamala Harris. Both of these political figures are present in the end times as seducers of the Lord's churches. You and I are commanded to be on our guard in the end times because men would creep in to seduce the Lord's servants to sin and to commit that spiritual fornication that is found in the end times. Jude verse 4 says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ.
turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. That Republican National Convention was nothing more than a bunch of lasciviousness. Porn stars and rock stars and perverts. Trump, the most pro-gay president ever. Seduced the Lord's churches into voting for him. Although he's a liberal and a compromiser. Concerning sexual sins in the LGBTQ movement. And the only defense that those that have to support him are that he is the lesser of two evils. But evil is still evil. And Trump is evil. Let me go on to say this, that I do not believe that that was an actual assassination attempt. I believe it was staged. I do believe that somebody died. I do believe they shot that young man. And I do also believe, I do also believe that that fireman was killed. But Trump's running around saying he took a bullet for democracy. No, that fireman took a bullet for the republic. Trump has seduced people into following and bending in and giving up of their principles. For instance, his entire platform is set up concerning abortion with three exceptions. Rape, incest, and the life of the mother. They want those three exceptions. Why? Well, Trump said, you got to follow your heart. You got to follow your heart. Who is he? He's Balaam. He's even mocked other men that have placed absolute bans on abortion for any time frame. He's mocked them and said, that's too extreme. That's too extreme, he says. He said, we got to win. We got to win the election. So... We can't have those extreme positions. So it's okay to kill a baby for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. That's what he says. Brother Paul, live atop of Mount Major, New Hampshire. I saw Emma's post on Instagram. She's she's said that's a really difficult mountain to climb there. (laughs) 
So Trump has these exclusions. What is he? He's Balaam. Casting a stumbling block before the Lord's churches to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication to betray the Lord. He's leading churches from moral absolutes as found in the scriptures to a spiritual fornication, to another Jesus, even another gospel, another set of principles. He's brought them to sit at the table with sodomites, queers, and transgenders and to accept the platform against marriage between a man and a woman. Had him drop the platform of marriage between a man and a woman. Right? He's Constantine. That's who he is. Merging apostate state religion together. Merging it together. Bringing everybody to the Vatican II table. He's brought them to the table with sodomites, queers, and transgenders, and to accept the platform against marriage. He did Balaam's work. He brought the church like Balaam did to the world. Like Israel to commit fornication, sexual sins, and prostitute out the Lord's churches. To a world to sit with the world and to literally change the definition of marriage and abortion and all these issues. Balaam, like Frankie Graham who put his Jesuit Masonic stamp on the approval of Balak, the political figure, to commit spiritual fornication with a world system and for the churches to openly back a wicked platform. It's spiritual seduction at its highest level. It was foretold about. And we're warned as churches to stay clear of these wicked men and their worldly systems that are designed to seduce the Lord's churches. Let me ask you, Christian brother, sister, will you stand in line with the log cabin Republicans, the sodomite movement with Trump to defeat the other sex cult of the Democrats? Will you stand in line with the occultist Tucker Carlson, with the occultist Alex Jones, with the occultist Joe Rogan, with the occultist Elon Musk, standing in line with them, Evil communication corrupts good manners. How are they any different than the other side? It is the perception and degrees of difference. Need I remind you, it is spiritual seduction and men cannot see it until they are consumed with it, until they are taken by it.
Trump is like Balaam teaching the churches to sit at the table with wicked men and eat things sacrificed unto idols. There's a stumbling block cast before the Lord's people. And the compromise into sinful things has only gotten worse. Just last week, the support of the abortion pill by him and his vice president to women everywhere. 63% of all abortions that were done in 2023 were done by the abortion pill. They swallowed a pill to kill their baby. And Trump said he's okay with that. And J.D. Vance says he's okay with that. So they single-handedly redefine what they, what they say about pro-life. They are not for the abolition of abortion. They are not for it. I am not pro-life. I am an abolitionist. I am completely 100% for the abolition of abortion. The ending of child sacrifice. But what has Trump and Vance done? They got a bunch of Republicans, the Christian right, to go along with them. Right now, I am reading a great book. I'm 100 pages in. I've got 400 more to go. I'm going to try to finish it by this weekend. It's Bill Grady's book called What God Hath Wrought. And it's on the Baptist founding of America. And it's interesting to me because I'm putting together this documentary in the weeks to come. And I never even thought about reading that book. But somebody gave me an extra copy. And I already have it. And I looked at that and I was like, you know what? I like Bill Grady's books. I've read three of them. Or is it two? No, two. I think I've only read two of his books. Yeah, two. This is the third one. And it's going to go along with my documentary. Because I know a lot of this information from American Crimson Red and, and everything, but Bill Grady gets into a lot more details that are fascinating to me. I'm going to spend some time here this weekend, since we don't have preaching this weekend, to try to finish that book. I'm going to read his other books. I'll probably end up reading all of his books eventually. He's a Baptist. He understands how this country was founded. He knows the real story. Much like Brother Beller did.
No, it's not audio. You have to read it. You have to read it, you people. You don't like to read anything. I don't know what's up with everybody. No, nobody wants to read anything anymore. Some people don't have time, I know, but. But anyway, as I'm reading this, he's talking about the founding of America the Baptist roots. I'm going to talk about that in my documentary, the Baptist bill of rights. When I pull the footage from Canada, a few of the others. And the Vatican. I'm praying about how this is all fitting in because I don't know if this is going to be a separate documentary or if it's going to be the Vatican, Israel, and the Baptist Bill of Rights. I, I, I don't know yet. I'm praying about it because somehow this all fits together. So I'm working on it. No, you can't get a PDF. You have to buy it. There is no PDF. You have to buy it. It's a monumental work. You should pay for it. Anyway. And talking about the founding of this country and talking about liberty, talking about the fight and the difference in religious tyranny, what these people are producing now, what Trump is doing, what all he's Constantine, and he's he's the reformers. He's the reformers. Okay. And Baptists should have no no dealings with those reformers when it comes to that. They should have no dealings with the church state. It's the reason why we're not a 501c3. When you give money to this church, you're not giving it to the Lord's work. You're giving it to people. Like you're giving it to the pastor. You're not giving it to a 501c3 corporation. You're not giving it to a nonprofit organization. You're not giving it to a government entity. You're giving it like the churches gave to the Apostle Paul and to other brethren. That's who you're giving it to. You're not giving it to some 501c3 corporation. Something, some creature of the state connected to the government. Because I'm a Baptist and I believe what the Bible says. That's the difference. And we as a church may never have any meeting house and a rented meeting house. Why? Because I will not capitulate to the government. There might be other unique ways that we can do it, and there are. There are other things that can be started, but Old Paz Baptist Church will remain independent as a spiritual entity by the grace of God. 
Amen. That's the difference, right? See, there's a stumbling block that's cast before the Lord's people. And the compromise into sinful things has only gotten worse. Turn to Numbers. In order to understand Balaam and what Revelation is talking about, you got to look at Balak who hired Balaam to go curse Israel which is a picture Balaam and Jezebel pictures of prophetesses religious figures mind you religious figures not atheist For atheism is too dumb for the devils even to believe. Takes a special kind of stupid to be an atheist. But in order to understand who Balaam is, we have to go back. And he sent messengers therefore unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to, Be Pethor, to Pethor, which is by the river, the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me these, this people. For they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I want that. He whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed from the rewards of divination in their hand, with the rewards of divination in their hand, and came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Balak. God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. See, Balaam did all he could do, or Balak did, to hire Balaam to do all that he could do to curse Israel. And every time he tried to curse Israel, it turned back on him. Now understand this. This is how Satan operates. He will first try persecution. And if persecution does not work, then he will join them and defile them. Because we find in church history, we find 300 year, or 250 years of persecution. Heavy persecution. And all it did from the time of the apostles to the time of Constantine was grow the number of the churches stronger. So... Satan changed his tactic with Constantine. time. 
instead of persecution, he joined them. And then he perverted them with a counterfeit Christianity. He wined and dined them. He stopped killing them. And then he set up a national religion. But he morphed it. It became a different type of religion. It wasn't biblical Christianity. It became state-sponsored Christianity. Where instead of meeting in little meeting houses, like Old Paz Baptist Church meets in, they started, Constantine started building huge edifices and huge buildings and big and state-funded and taxed, paid for. That's what he did. And what happened was compromise would set in. And then Rome got to be huge. And then Rome became the despot over all other churches. That's what ended up happening. So Rome becomes the state-sponsored Caesar. Pontifex Maximus becomes Constantine. And then eventually the Pope. And then the Pope would set up his kingdom of anti-Christianity. And in that same spirit, you have Trump now. An anti-Christ religion. But in order to do it, he had to join them to corrupt them. Being their enemy from the outside, they would not be deceived. They would war against him. Coming in on the inside, apostasy and deception would come. That's what Balaam did. Balaam said, I got an idea, Balak. I cannot curse them. But I'll tell you what. I can show you how to get them to curse themselves. So how do the churches of America curse themselves? Compromise. Compromise. that they would commit fornication, that they would turn on the words of God, on what God has commanded them to do, and they would turn. Numbers 25, verse 17. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they had beguiled you in the matter of Peor and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of the prince of, of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague of Peor. What happened? They seduced them. They brought out the whores. 
They brought out the whores to seduce the men of Israel. Numbers 31. Because Balaam said, hey, I'll tell you what. If you bring out all these women, they'll go up to the feast. They'll eat with them. And they'll commit fornication with them. They'll eat things offered unto idols. What was it? A big old sex orgy. That's what it was. They got him to eat with them. And they seduced him. And they brought a curse on themselves. Numbers 31, behold the, verse 16, behold these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. There was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. What'd they do? These princes of Midian, these women of Midian, seduced the men. They sat down with them. They ate with them. They partied with them. They seduced them. They committed fornication. They sat at the table with these political leaders. So what did you have at the last Republican National Convention? Frankie Graham, a Hindu, praying to their false gods, a porn star. Perverts, strippers. Compromised. The churches have no power today in America because they're compromised. They're absolutely compromised and they've brought it on themselves. From the Southern Baptist Convention. to Baptists and Protestants alike that are trying to make America great again. Not through the pulpit, not through the preaching of God's word, not through church planting, not returning to biblical roots. Not to thousands upon thousands of men hitting the streets but hitting a Trump rally. You know, in about a week, I think it's about a week or so, in about a week, we're going to stand outside of a Metallica concert, like a week and a half. We're going to stand outside of a Metallica concert and Pantera concert, 70,000 fans are going to be there at that concert. And we're going to preach, Lord willing, and tract. And we're probably going to be the only people there. But you'll have a Trump rally of thousands of people You'll have a Trump rally with thousands of people. Thousands of professing Christians won't lift a finger to evangelize 
but are trying to make America great again through the political parties. By the way, that is not how we got our liberty in this nation. We did not get our liberty through parties. Through political parties. The pilgrims, when they came over, the Baptists, when they came over, the Dutch Baptists that influenced it, wasn't through political parties. It was through a great awakening. That took place. That swept through. And that. Swept through the nation. And a church planting, Baptist church planting revival that went through the entire South. Exactly. It was the gospel. It was men gripped over their sin and in fear. That's what it was. It was men, women, and children broken under the preaching of God's word by the moving of the Holy Ghost that affected the entire world because the liberty that came out of those Baptist revivals swept through the world. It was not corrupt politicians. It was preachers of righteousness. It was not compromising Balaam's. Not at all. Not even close. But what we see now is what is is the way of Balaam. Numbers 25, 1, and Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. So you see, Balaam seduced Israel to fornication. And so it is with Trump, the way of Balaam. To come to a feast and eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornications and to seduce from the truth. Spiritual compromise and bring a curse upon themselves. Corrupt political alliances. Seducing. All right. We're going to take a break here for a second, play a song, and then we're going to get to the next half of this teaching here. A ship was tossing to and fro 
is dashed on every hand. Angry winds around it blow. All on board were filled with fright as the mighty billows roll. Then they called upon the one who the winds and waves control. at his command winds and waves obey his will when he says to them be still what man is this they all did say that the winds and seas obey he's the one who sails with me he's the master of the sea Storms of life may rage and the billows round you roll. He can calm life's troubled sea as he did in days of old. As upon my sea you sail, trust in him who never fails. I'm so glad he sails with me. When he reaches out his hand, billows cease at his command. Winds and waves obey his will. When he says to them, be still, what man is this they all did say?
All right, here we go. Now we come to the second half of this and we talk about Jezebel, right? Uh, let's go back to Revelation chapter 2. So you've got Balaam on one side. And you've got that Jezebel prophetess on the other side. Two characters that you see in the scriptures in the end times. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Same thing as Balaam, just a woman. I will tell you, I have never seen a greater bunch of effeminate men in my life than in our generations that we have in America today. In the churches, they have women ruling. In the world, they have women ruling. In the home, they have women ruling. It is absolute rebellion to God's order. By the way, just on the mindset of women alone, It should be it should be a blowout election for a man. Because no self-respecting men and no God-fearing women should ever vote for a woman in leadership. Ever. By the way, a society is absolutely destroyed by their women. One of the last straws in the destruction of society is women. There would be no abortion. if women would stop giving over to fornication. If women kept their chastity and waited for marriage, you would, you would reduce abortion to the smallest amount ever. It is women that have given their bodies over to men that have broke away from chastity and what is right that has caused the dilemma that we are in right now. Because women have not required men to marry them. Fathers have not given away their daughters to men that would marry them. So therefore, these are real issues today. Even their women did leave the natural use of that which is against nature. Because women want the free sex society. They want no boundaries. They want equality with men. So they've whored themselves out and sold their bodies off to men and 
And that's what's caused it. You have liberal churches. You have Christians who are compromised with female leadership today. Do we not see the same thing on both sides? The Republican National Convention was full of women. The whole thing was about women. Why? Because they're trying to appeal to women. Think about it. On the Republican side, Michelle Bachman, years from years ago, Bobart, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Nancy Mace, Elise, uh, whatever her name is, from uh, New York. They're all figures, female figures of authority. Nancy Pelosi on the on the left side. AOC. The squad. The Muslim women. Which none of those Muslim women could ever do what they're doing in another country. Go over to Somalia and try that and be a congresswoman. You brag about being a Muslim? Go be a Muslim over in Saudi Arabia and see what they do to you as a woman. I dare you. Go over there. Go to Saudi Arabia. Go to Somalia. Go to Jordan. Go to Palestine, which doesn't exist. Go to those places and be a Muslim and see and see what happens as a woman. I dare you. Wouldn't work, would it? No. They can't even practice their religion the way they do in the U.S. But I'll tell you something. These Jezebels that are in society, are running rampant in the Lord's churches. They're already in the Lord's churches. They've been run in the Lord's churches. And my people love to have it so. They love to have women rule over them and to lead them. They compromise the Bible in their homes and the workplaces, sending their daughters and women off to the churches into the workforce. And now you have another woman on the top of the ticket for president. So you choose between Jezebel or Balaam. You choose between the fascists and the Marxists. Right? That's who you choose between. It's the name of the game, isn't it? Let's see.
Uh, I'm looking for... Here we go. That's what I was looking for right here. I just received the intelligence that President Biden has stepped out of the race. And I want us Stand calmly and be resolute. Make sure that we do the right thing. The eyes of the world will be upon us. But the Bible says here, let us lay aside every weight and every sin and run the race which is set before us. And I would like to bring before you seven sins that America needs to let go if she's going to run this race. The first sin is sexism. Sexism. God made us all, male and female. But this sexism will destroy civilization. Can you believe this guy claims to be a Baptist and he's calling it sexism to differentiate between the sexes? God made man the lead woman. Why? Because God smiled on both Adam and Eve. And Adam does not have the last word. Adam has messed up this world. Say amen, somebody. I said Adam has messed up this world. And in America, we've had all these Adams at the helm for the most part. Say one, they've been messing it up. With war after war. Messing it up. Messed it up with the Civil War, messed it up with World War I, messed it up with all the other wars in between, messed it up with World War II. And I think that maybe it's time that America humbles itself and since the men messed it up, let a woman be in that White House. Really? That's what this idiot thinks. This stupid black Uncle Tom fool really thinks that. This guy is so stuck on the plantation still. He is an absolute slave. I'm going to tell you what, those guys in that, let me tell you something. Those guys in that, that, um, that, um, those guys that are stuck in that, they have a Jezebel spirit. They've been raised by a black mama, ain't had a daddy stand up and teach him what was right and lead them. So they've been raised by some, some big old black mama, the matriarchy instead of the patriarchy. It isn't because men, Men have led the country that it's a mess. It's because men have turned their back again, uh, uh, on God. That's what happened. Do you know what Dr. Spong, Bishop Spong of the Episcopal Church said? A person who's a sexist and is mean as hell to a woman is showing his insecurity. For he says, Dr. Spong, you can check it out, that primitive man discovered that a woman had a menstrual cycle 
once a month. And though there was bleeding, the woman did not bleed, Brother Chairman, Emeritus. So he decided that I'm going to keep my foot on her because she might do me in for when I am cut and I bleed, I die. Do y'all get it? No, I don't get it, you idiot. That's stupid. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Primitive man. See, let me tell you something. These people, they have that Jezebel spirit. It hovers over them. And by the way, I'll tell you this. The white power structure of this world, which is the Pope's power structure, wants nothing more than to to emasculate and demoralize God-fearing, holy black men. They they want to demoralize God-fearing, holy black men. That's their goal. That's the Pope's power structure. That's what they do. Why do you think all of the heroes of the black race are men that they eventually turn into homos? They put a dress on them. They cross-dress them. They emasculate them. They make them look like homos and queers and effeminate men. And they have them ruled over by black women. They do it on purpose. To demoralize black men. To emasculate them. They do it with the rock dressed like a woman. Tyler Perry's greatest series is is about a fat black mama, cross-dressed. They hate him. They absolutely hate him. That's why they that, that's why they emasculate him. And by the way, I've watched women do that too. This feminist spirit, it's not just to black men either, it's to white men too. All men, really. But it's rebellion to God's order. Women that that don't obey their husbands and don't follow them, they try to emasculate their husbands or their sons, and they talk down to them. Instead of encouraging biblical manhood and leadership out of a young man or a husband, they insult them and they talk down to them. That's that Jezebel spirit. So you have women that are running around with that Jezebel spirit lording it over men. That's what's going on now, everywhere. Christian men in their homes. I've seen it over the years in families where the woman doesn't want to submit to her husband. She runs her mouth. She's bossy. She embarrasses him. She corrects him in front of other men and other women. Talks down to him, bullies him. Threatens him. It's emasculation of men.
That's what we have today. That's why you even have, that's why, you, by the way, the picture of it, just to show female Secret Service agents guarding Trump. Right? We watch it and we see it. They want that image in that picture there. Why? Because they're a bunch of Jezebels in rebellion to God's order, in rebellion to the way that God designed everything. Years of sitcoms doing the same thing. Emasculating men in front of everybody, in front of the world. By the way, that's why, and Trump's part of this, by the way, that's why they have like two black women going after the white man, Trump. It's to enrage white men and to make them angry. That's what it's for. It's to make them mad. To bring in the fascist right. It's all by design. And by the way, but that's why also you see all these young white shooters, right? Well, look what they've done to all these young men. Look at how this world treats men today. Mansplaining, they call it. Manspreading, they call it. So I just tell them flat out when I'm out there preaching, yeah, I'm mansplaining to you. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing it, yeah. They're like, he's admitting he's doing that. Yeah, I am. Because they hate men. They hate real men. Because that Jezebel spirit is pervading society. And that's why women need to follow the scriptures. They need to obey the scriptures. They need to be submissive to their own husbands. They need to be a godly example, not a loudmouth, stubborn broad. Because society is going to keep telling you, well, you're equal. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, but God's word doesn't tell you that. God's word doesn't tell you you can do whatever you want. Amen, Gregory. God's word tells you that you need to follow the word of God. But you know something? If women keep following the age... If they keep following the spirit of this age which is Antichrist. They're not going to have any men left. I don't know how any God-fearing men, I don't know how any man could vote for a female leader anyway. 
whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. I did it before, so I know how you can. You don't think about it. Nobody preaches it. But after I started studying the Bible myself and learning the role of the sexes and how God instituted society and how God wanted his, his country or his uh, people to be, his church, it changed my life. I mean, I was already following those things years ago. But it absolutely changed my entire outlook on how the church was supposed to conduct itself and how we were actually supposed to prepare people for life, Christian life in this world. And how that affected who we voted for in leadership or who we promoted in leadership and how we conducted our marriages and who goes to work and who stays home with the children and raises the family and everything else that it wasn't just some tradition. That it's biblical mandated, biblically mandated. And that it affects your family, it affects your home, it affects your church, it affects the nation. And now more than ever, because America is so completely anti-Christ now. Do we need as people, God's people, to get this right? Because they're not going to know what a man or a woman is. They're not going to know what a, what a family is. They're being told a family is two men, two women, transgenders. That's what they're being told a family is. But that's not what God says it is. That isn't what God says it is, is it? God said at the solitary in families, he bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. See, we don't even know. They don't even know what a family is anymore. You got your political parties redefining what a family is. So you are literally realizing that your very example of living is going to be largely the biggest testimony that they see. the traditional roles of a wife and a husband, children, marriage, family. Why do you do what you do? Because we're saved. We're children of God. And we follow the scriptures. And we raise our, and our church. And we raise our families for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we stick out like a sore thumb to everywhere we go. Meanwhile, Balaam and Jezebel are seducing the churches to commit fornication. And people like Beth Moore and, and, and people like the Southern Baptist Convention 
and they're using the sin of these organizations, the sexual promiscuity, the molestation, and all these other wicked things that go on. They're using them to break down any boundaries that the scriptures have given. When all of those sins do not negate the fact that God has an order that he has set down. But see, because the churches are compromised from within, because of sin, they have no power. Because of sin, they have no power. That now everybody mocks it. Everybody mocks it. Why? Because of the sin that has run rampant in churches. So Balaam and Jezebel get their way. And the least common denominator of people are voted into office, are advertised, are accepted. Right? That's why. The sodomites, the transgenders, Balaam and Jezebel. And the churches are compromised. Of the lesser of two evils, choose none. Choose neither. We don't need a political leader. We need churches planted. We need God, we need God's people being willing to sacrifice to see churches planted, willing to give to ministries, willing to do what's right, willing to raise their families right, turning away from sin, living sanctified lives, walking in the fear of the Lord, being the husband there to be, the wife there to be. That's what we need. Sanctified and God-fearing people that are sold out to the Lord. Fathers and mothers that lead their family in the Lord. That don't compromise with the world system in that way. Returning to God's order of things. Right? Right? A returning. We need more churches and people member and God's people out there that are scattered everywhere to get into local New Testament churches. Not be satisfied with mere internet Christianity, but willing to sacrifice and get to local New Testament churches to see more churches founded and started. Instead, even like that wicked guy. J.D. Vance said, you got a bunch of motherless cat ladies out there for women. They're motherless cat ladies. I see people bragging about their Bragging about their animals instead of their own grandchildren. They talk more about their animals than they do their own children and grandchildren. 
And I'm going to I'm going to preach on this sometime soon. I'm going to talk about this. But you have more grandparents that are traveling around the world than they are godly grandparents instead of investing in the lives of their grandchildren and the next generation. They, they're more concerned with being snowbirds than they are being involved in their grandchildren's lives. They're invested more in Pookie Dookie the Doggy Woggy than they are their own grandchildren. Or the fluffy cat. than they are with their own children. It's just ridiculous. The way I see people laud over animals, I wonder, do you ever invest in a human's life? Like, do you ever invest in other people's lives at all? What about human beings who Christ died for? It's the unnatural affection of the times.
everybody god bless you uh we're gonna get out of here don't miss tonight's service if you're over here on the on this side of the pond uh we'll be preaching live at 7 45 p.m central time back in the book of ephesians chapter 3 and um so ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 so hope you can join us for that if not you can catch it on the replay tomorrow but uh you pray for our ministry pray for our church Pray for the Lord to continue to provide for us and meet our needs and uh, pray for wisdom concerning and pray for my children to get better. They're still battling this nasty cold virus that has been lingering and hanging on. So uh, I appreciate the prayers for that. Um, and if you'd like to give to our ministry, number you may do so. Uh, if you go to sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley, you can click on the give button. Uh, there's a PayPal link right there. You can click on PayPal, or you can email us at salvationpreacher at gmail.com. Salvationpreacher at gmail.com is our PayPal address, or you can mail us something to 1030 South Highway 3, Northfield, Minnesota, 55057. Or you can give to, um, you could do Apple Pay or Venmo, which is Pastor Cooley at iCloud.com. Okay. Otherwise, you can mail us, uh, and you see that on there, okay? Anyway, God bless you all. Take care, and we'll see you here real soon.